Hi everybody, welcome back to the Tetrix RoboBench video series. This is Tim and we are working our way through the getting started activities for the Pulse Programmer's Guide. We've done one, two, and three. We've uh, turned on a light, we've moved our DC motor, we moved a servo motor, and now we're ready to move on to sensors in activity four. We are gonna look at the line finder sensor. So let's go ahead and make sure we gather everything up. We've got a computer, we've got software loaded on that, ready to go. We've got our charge battery. We have our pulse programming uh, controller. We've got a USB cable. We have a line finder sensor and our mount. And the other thing that we have is a little test card so that we can uh, tell the difference between a contrasting service between light and dark with our line finder sensor. So we've got all that, we're ready to go. We can go into our program. We can go up to our example menu and go down to activity four and we can open up our existing example sketch for the line finder. And again, we have everything that we need in our sketch to start with. We could recreate this by scratch if we wanted to by going over to our pulse palette into control and the other options there, but we don't need to because we have it available for us in our examples. We've got our control block that sets our framework, <laughs> excuse me, framework for our program, including the pulse begin block. We have our loop before below that. Inside that loop, we have a couple of things that are new. Uh, first, we have a logic block, an if, else if block, that is going to look at the condition of our line finder sensor, and based on the condition of either being light or, or dark, it is going to um, output to our LEDs on our board. If the line finder sensor is over the white background, it's going to turn our red LED on and make sure our yellow light is off. It's over the black, it's going to turn the red LED off and turn the, the yellow LED on. So that's what should happen. So let's go ahead and make our connections and make, see if it does happen that way. We can start with our battery and we can plug that in right below the control switch, power on off. And, uh, plug in our sensor into our D2 port, top digital port there. And we can plug in our USB cable. Have everything connected, power on our board so that we see that we have our blue light and we can go into our software and we can upload our sketch. It is talking to the Arduino IDE, should be sending data and it should give me a message that it's successfully uploaded. If I look down here, I've got a green light that's saying that it was successful and we're ready to go. So if I press my start button, and I hold my sensor over the white, um, the red light should be on. And if as I move it over the dark, the yellow light should come on and the red light goes out. So now as I move my sensor back and forth, I see, see those two lights turning on and off. So it's obviously recognizing the condition of the line finder sensor. So we now know how to use a sensor. And again, if I move it up, it acts like it's reading dark. So that's why we're getting that um, action there. But that's talking to and using a, a sensor, a line finder sensor. So what are some of the real world connections here? Well, obviously robots in either industry or sometimes like hospitals, they will be able to react to either a, a light line finder by uh, following a trail and either delivering information or delivering actual uh, product from one location to another in um, an industrial application or an application like a hospital. Hospitals in Japan use this kind of technology to actually deliver things. So that would be a very real world connection. So what would the extension of that be? Well, we've used a motor, we've used a servo, and we've used uh, uh, the, the actual lights. So we could practice changing our, our program to 
output to uh, different types of actions besides just the light. We did the light already, but we could hook our motor back up and we could, based on the condition of our line finder sensor, we could turn our motor or we could make our servo go to a specific uh, location. So that would be an extension of this and we encourage you to try and do that. Um, and again, remember that in our book, we have a, a very close correlation in between the text that we see over here on the right-hand side of our window and the actual graphic blocks that are going on there. So I encourage you to explore that. So that's activity number four, and we're ready to move on to activity five, so come on back.